John James Conyers, Jr. Born May 16, 1929, is a retired American politician of the Democratic Party who served as a U.S. Representative for Michigan from 1965 to 2017. The districts he represented always included part of western Detroit, and during his final three terms included many of Detroit's western suburbs, as well as a large portion of the Downriver area. Conyers served more than 50 years in Congress, becoming the sixth longest serving member of Congress in U.S. history. He is also the longest serving African American member of Congress. Conyers was also the Dean of the House of Representatives, and by the end of his term was the last remaining member of Congress who had served since the presidency of Lyndon B. Johnson. After serving in the Korean War, Conyers became active in the civil rights movement. He also served as an aide to Congressman John Dingell before winning election to the House in 1964. He co-founded the Congressional Black Caucus in 1969 and established a reputation as one of the most liberal members of Congress. Conyers joined the Liberal Congressional Progressive Caucus after it was founded in 1991. Conyers supports the creation of a single-payer health care system and sponsored the United States National Health Care Act to achieve that goal. He also sponsored a bill to establish Martin Luther King Jr. Day as a federal holiday. Conyers ran for mayor of Detroit in 1989 and 1993 but was defeated in the primary in both elections. Conyers served as the ranking Democratic member on the House Committee on the Judiciary from 1995 to 2007 and again from 2011 to 2017. He served as chairman of that committee from 2007 to 2011 and as chairman of the House Oversight Committee from 1989 to 1995. On November 26, 2017, he announced his intention to step aside from that position while he was investigated by the House for allegations of sexual harassment. Later in November 2017, in the wake of allegations that he had sexually harassed female staff members and secretly used taxpayer money to settle a harassment claim, the news media reported that Conyers intended to retire from Congress at the end of his current term and not seek re election in 2018. On December 5, 2017, Conyers announced his resignation, effective immediately, and his endorsement of Ian Conyers to replace him in Congress. <laughs> early life, education, and early career Conyers was born in Highland Park, Michigan, and grew up in Detroit, the son of Lucille Janus Simpson and John Conyers, a labor leader. After graduating from Northwestern High School, Conyers served in the Michigan National Guard from 1948 to 1950, the U.S. Army from 1950 to 1954, and the U.S. Army Reserves from 1954 to 1957. Conyers served for a year in Korea during the Korean War as an officer in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and was awarded combat and merit citations. He received both his B.A. and L.L.B. degrees from Wayne State University. After attaining admission to the bar, he worked on the staff of Congressman John Dingell and served as counsel to several Detroit area labor union locals. From 1961 to 1963 he was a referee for Michigan's Workmen's Compensation Department. Conyers was present in Selma, Alabama, on October 7, 1963, for the civil rights movement voter registration drive known as Freedom Day. <laughs> Detroit mayoral campaigns While serving in the U.S. House, Conyers made two unsuccessful runs for mayor of Detroit, one in 1989 against incumbent Coleman Young and again in 1993. 1989 Incumbent Democratic Mayor Coleman Young decided to run for a fifth term, despite growing in popularity and the declining economy of Detroit. In the September primary, Young won with 51% of the vote. Accountant Tom Barrow qualified for the November runoff by getting second place with 24% and Conyers got third place with 18% of the vote. Young defeated Barrow in the runoff with 56% of the vote.
In June 1993, incumbent Democratic Mayor Coleman Young decided to retire instead of seeking a sixth term, citing his age and health, although many believed he decided not to run because of his growing in popularity. In a Detroit News poll in February, 81% said Young should retire. Conyers was one of the 23 candidates who qualified for ballot access. Dennis Archer was a clear front runner from the beginning. He was a 51-year-old former state Supreme Court justice who raised over $1.6 million. He won the September primary with 54% of the vote. Conyers came in fourth place. Archer won the November election. U.S. House of Representatives Elections In 1964, he ran for an open seat in what was then the 1st District, and defeated Republican Robert Blackwell with 84% of the vote. He was re-elected 13 times with even larger margins. After the 1990 United States Census, Michigan lost a congressional district and Conyers's district was renumbered to the 14th District. In 1992, he won re-election to his 15th term in his new district with 82% of the vote against Republican nominee John Gordon. He won re-election another nine times after that. His worst re-election performance was in 2010, when he got 77% of the vote against Republican nominee Don Ukrainek. In 2013, his district was renamed to the 13th District. In total, he won re-election 25 times and was serving in his 26th term. He was the longest-serving current member of the House, the longest-serving current member of the entire Congress, the third-longest-serving member of the House in history, and the sixth-longest-serving member of Congress in history. He is the second-longest-serving member of either House of Congress in Michigan's history, trailing only his former boss, Dingell. He was also the last member of the large Democratic freshman class of 1964 who was still serving in the House. In May 2014, Wayne County Clerk Kathy Garrett determined that Conyers had not submitted enough valid nominating petition signatures to appear on the August 2014 primary election ballot. Two of his petition circulators were found not to have been registered voters at the time they were collecting signatures, as required under Michigan law. However, on May 23, Federal District Judge Matthew Lightman issued an injunction placing Conyers back on the ballot, ruling that the requirement that circulators be registered voters was similar to an Ohio law previously found unconstitutional by a federal appeals court in 2008. The Michigan Secretary of State's office subsequently announced they would not appeal the ruling. Tenure. Conyers is one of the 13 founding members of the Congressional Black Caucus CBC and was considered the dean of that group. Formed in 1969, the CBC was founded to strengthen African American lawmakers' ability to address the legislative concerns of black and minority citizens. He served longer in Congress than any other African American. In 1971, he was one of the original members of Nixon's enemies list. In 1965 Conyers won a seat as a freshman on the Influential Judiciary Committee, which was then under the leadership of Democratic Congressman Emanuel Seller of New York. At the time, the assignment was an elite one, as judiciary ranked behind only ways and means and appropriations in terms of the number of members who sought assignment there. According to the National Journal, Conyers has been considered, with Pete Stark, John Lewis, Jim McDermott, and Barbara Lee, to be one of the most liberal members of Congress for many years. Civil rights movement icon Rosa Parks served on Conyers' staff between 1965 and 1988. Conyers is known as one of the opponents of the drive to regulate online gambling. He has likened the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act of 2006, hidden within the Safeport Act, to prohibition. After Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination in 1968, Conyers introduced the first bill in Congress to make King's birthday a national holiday. It is now celebrated as Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Conyers introduced the Commission to Study Reparation Proposals for African Americans Act, H.R. 3745, in January 1989, and has reintroduced anew this bill each congressional term. This bill calls for the creation of a commission to research the history of slavery and its effects on current America, resulting in recommendations on how to remedy this injustice. 
Its current version was introduced and referred to committee on January 3, 2013. Conyers first introduced the proposed resolution in 1989, and has stated his intention to annually propose this act until it is approved and passed. Since 1997, the bill has been designated, H.R. 40, most recently, H.R. 40. If passed, it would express the impact of slavery's brutal institution on today's society, politics, and economy. My bill does four things, it acknowledges the fundamental injustice and inhumanity of slavery, it establishes a commission to study slavery, its subsequent racial and economic discrimination against freed slaves, it studies the impact of those forces on today's living African Americans, and the commission would then make recommendations to Congress on appropriate remedies to redress the harm inflicted on living African Americans. Nixon and Watergate Conyers was critical of Richard Nixon during his tenure, and as a result was number 13 on President Richard Nixon's enemies list during Nixon's 1969–74 presidential tenure. The president's chief counsel described him as, "...coming on fast," and that he was, "...emerging," as a, "...black anti-Nixon spokesman." Conyers voted on the Articles of Impeachment against Nixon in July 1974. He was the last remaining member of the House Judiciary Committee who did so. <laughs> <laughs> National Health Care Act The United States National Health Care Act Expanded and Improved Medicare for All Act HR 676 is a bill submitted to the United States House of Representatives by Conyers which, as of 2015, had 49 cosponsors. It was first introduced, with 25 cosponsors, in 2003, and reintroduced each session since then. The Act calls for the creation of a universal single-payer health care system in the United States, in which the government would provide every resident health care free of charge. In order to eliminate disparate treatment between richer and poorer Americans, the Act would also prohibit private insurers from covering any treatment or procedure already covered by the Act. <laughs> Downing Street Memo On May 5, 2005, Conyers and 88 other members of Congress wrote an open letter to the White House inquiring about the Downing Street Memo, a leaked memorandum that revealed an apparent secret agreement between the United States and the United Kingdom to attack Iraq in 2002. The Times reported that newly discovered documents reveal British and U.S. intentions to invade Iraq and leaders of the two countries had "...discussed creating pretextual justifications for doing so." The documents go on to say that Tony Blair decided the United States would need to create conditions to justify the war. The memo story broke in the United Kingdom, but did not receive much coverage in the United States, prompting Conyers to lament, This should not be allowed to fall down the memory hole during wall to wall coverage of the Michael Jackson trial and a runaway bride. Conyers and others reportedly considered sending a congressional investigation delegation to London. What went wrong in Ohio In May 2005, Conyers released What Went Wrong in Ohio, the Conyers Report on the 2004 presidential election, which dealt with the voting irregularities in the state of Ohio during the 2004 U.S. presidential election. The evidence offered consists of statistical abnormalities in the differences between exit poll results and actual votes registered at those locations. The book also discusses reports of faulty electronic voting machines and the lack of credibility of those machines used to tally votes. Conyers was one of 31 members of the House who voted not to count the electoral votes from Ohio in the 2004 presidential election. The Constitution in crisis On August 4, 2006, Conyers released his report, The Constitution in Crisis, The Downing Street Minutes and Deception, Manipulation, Torture, Retributions and Cover-ups in the Iraq War, an edited collection of information intended to serve as evidence that the Bush administration altered intelligence to justify the 2003 invasion of Iraq. 
The Constitution in Crisis examines much of the evidence presented by the Bush administration prior to the invasion and questions the credibility of their sources of intelligence. In addition, the document investigates the conditions that led to the torture scandal at Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq, as well as further evidence of torture having been committed but not made known to the public. Finally, the document reports on a series of «smear tactics» purportedly used by the administration in dealing with its political adversaries. The document calls for the censure of President George W. Bush and Vice President Dick Cheney. Notably, however, Conyers refused to back impeachment proceedings. <laughs> On anti-Muslim intolerance Conyers has proposed House Resolution 288, which condemns religious intolerance, but emphasizes Islam as needing special protection from acts of violence and intolerance. It states that, "...it should never be official policy of the United States government to disparage the Quran, Islam, or any religion in any way, shape, or form," and calls upon local, state, and federal authorities to work to prevent bias-motivated crimes and acts against all individuals, including those of the Islamic faith." The bill was referred to the House Subcommittee on the Constitution in June 2005. In 2005, Conyers introduced H. Res. 160, a House resolution that would have condemned the conduct of Narendra Modi, then the Chief Minister of the State of Gujarat in India. The resolution was co-sponsored by Republican Representative Joseph R. Pitts Republican of Pennsylvania. The resolution's title was, "...condemning the conduct of Chief Minister Narendra Modi for his actions to incite religious persecution and urging the United States to condemn all violations of religious freedom in India." The resolution cited a 2004 United States Commission on International Religious Freedom report on Modi stating that he was widely accused of being reluctant to bring the perpetrators of the killings of Muslims and non-Hindus to justice." See 2002 Gujarat riots. The resolution was not adopted. <laughs> Conyers v. Bush In April 2006 Conyers, together with ten other senior congressmen, filed an action in the U.S. District Court in the Eastern District of Michigan, Southern Division, challenging the constitutionality of the Deficit Reduction Act of 2005. The complaint alleged the bill was not afforded due consideration by the United States Congress before being signed by the President. The action was subsequently dismissed on grounds of lack of standing. Ethics controversy In letters sent separately to the House Ethics Committee, the FBI, and the U.S. Attorney's Office, two former aides of Conyers alleged that Conyers used his staff to work on several local and state campaigns, and forced them to babysit and chauffeur his children. In late December 2006, Conyers accepted responsibility for possibly violating House rules. A statement issued December 29, 2006, by the House Ethics Committee Chairman Doc Hastings and Ranking Minority Member Howard Berman said that Conyers acknowledged what he characterized as a «lack of clarity» in his communications with staff members regarding their official duties and responsibilities, and accepted responsibility for his actions. In deciding to drop the matter, Hastings and Berman stated, after reviewing the information gathered during the inquiry, and in light of Representative Conyers' cooperation with the inquiry, we have concluded that this matter should be resolved through the issuance of this public statement and the agreement by Representative Conyers to take a number of additional, significant steps to ensure that his office complies with all rules and standards regarding campaign and personal work by congressional staff. Copyright bill. Conyers repeatedly introduced the Fair Copyright in Research Works Act, a bill that would overturn the NIH Public Access Policy, an open access mandate of the National Institutes of Health. Conyers' bill would forbid the government from mandating that federally funded research be made freely available to the public. 
The legislation was supported by the publishing industry, and opposed by groups such as the Electronic Frontier Foundation and writers Lawrence Lessig and Michael Eisen, who accused Conyers of being influenced by publishing houses who have contributed significant money to his campaigns. House report on George W. Bush presidency and proposed inquiry On January 13, 2009, the House Committee on the Judiciary, led by Conyers, released, "...reigning in the imperial presidency, lessons and recommendations relating to the presidency of George W. Bush." A 486-page report detailing alleged abuses of power that occurred during the Bush administration, and a comprehensive set of recommendations to prevent recurrence. Conyers introduced a bill to set up a «Truth Commission» panel to investigate alleged policy abuses of the Bush administration. <laughs> <laughs> bill reading controversy In late July 2009, Conyers, commenting on the health care debate in the House, stated, "'I love these members, they get up and say, read the bill. What good is reading the bill if it's a thousand pages and you don't have two days and two lawyers to find out what it means after you read the bill?" His remark brought criticism from government transparency advocates such as the Sunlight Foundation, which referred to readbill.org in response. Bribery conviction of wife, Monica Conyers On June 16, 2009, the United States Attorney's Office said that two Sinegro Technologies representatives had named Monica Conyers as the recipient of bribes from the company totaling more than $6,000, paid to influence passage of a contract with the City of Detroit. The information was gathered during an FBI investigation into political corruption in the city. She was given a pre-indictment letter, and offered a plea bargain deal in the case. On June 26, 2009, she was charged with conspiring to commit bribery. She pleaded guilty. On March 10, 2010, she was sentenced to 37 months in prison, and also received two years of supervised probation. She ended up serving just over 27 months at the Alderson Federal Prison Camp and was released from federal custody officially on May 16, 2013. Response to accusations regarding American Muslim spies In October, Conyers responded to allegations from four Republican Congress members, in the wake of the launch of the book Muslim Mafia, that the Council on American Islamic Relations sought to plant Muslim «spies» in Capitol Hill. He strongly opposed the accusations, saying, it shouldn't need to be said in 2009, and after the historic election of our first African American president, but let me remind all my colleagues that patriotic Americans of all races, religions, and beliefs have the right, and the responsibility, to participate in our political process, including by volunteering to work in congressional offices. Numerous Muslim American interns have served the House ably and they deserve our appreciation and respect, not attacks on their character or patriotism. Conyers was one of the first three U.S. Congress members to condemn the allegations, joining Andre Carson and Loretta Sanchez Wikileaks At a December 16, 2010, hearing of the House Judiciary Committee on the subject of the Espionage Act and the legal and constitutional issues raised by Wikileaks, Conyers argue d strongly against prosecuting WikiLeaks in haste or at all. He strongly defended the whistleblowing organization, saying, "As an initial matter, there is no doubt that WikiLeaks is very unpopular right now. Many feel that the WikiLeaks publication was offensive, but being unpopular is not a crime, and publishing offensive information is not either." and the repeated calls from politicians, journalists, and other so-called experts crying out for criminal prosecutions or other extreme measures make me very uncomfortable. Indeed, when everyone in this town is joined together calling for someone's head, that is it a pretty strong sign we need to slow down and take a closer look L let us not be hasty, and let us not legislate in a climate of fear or prejudice. 
For, in such an atmosphere, it is our constitutional freedoms and our cherished civil rights that are the first to be sacrificed in the false service of our national security. Conyers's statement was in marked contrast to the repeated calls from other members of Congress and Obama administration officials to prosecute WikiLeaks head Julian Assange immediately. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Criticism of American foreign policy. Conyers and his Republican colleague Ted Yoho offered bipartisan amendments to block the U.S. military training of Ukraine's Azov Battalion of the Ukrainian National Guard. Some members of the battalion are openly white supremacists. Conyers stated, "...if there's one simple lesson we can take away from U.S. involvement in conflicts overseas, it's this, beware of unintended consequences." As was made vividly clear with U.S. involvement in Afghanistan during the Soviet invasion decades ago, overzealous military assistance or the hyper-weaponization of conflicts can have destabilizing consequences and ultimately undercut our own national interests." Conyers has also voiced concerns about sending anti-aircraft missiles to Syrian rebels. Sexual harassment allegations and ensuing resignation In 2015, a former employee of Conyers alleged that he had sexually harassed her. Her affidavit was filed with the Congressional Office of Compliance and she was, with public funds, allegedly paid a settlement of $27,000. BuzzFeed reported on this settlement on November 20, 2017, based on documents from Mike Cernovich, including accounts of other ethical concerns associated with Conyers's office, such as sexual harassment of other female staffers, and staffers often finding him undressed inside his office. Conyers responded to these reports, saying, "...in our country, we strive to honor this fundamental principle that all are entitled to due process." In this case, I expressly and vehemently denied the allegations made against me, and continue to do so. My office resolved the allegations—with an express denial of liability—in order to save all involved from the rigors of protracted litigation." On November 21, 2017, the House Ethics Committee launched an investigation into multiple sexual harassment allegations against Conyers. Reports of a second woman accusing Conyers of sexual harassment appeared later in November 2017. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, who had initially stated that Conyers was an «icon» and had done a great deal to protect women, called upon Conyers to resign, and called the allegations against him «very credible». On December 5, 2017, Conyers resigned his House seat because of his mounting sexual scandals. The announcement came the day after another former staffer released an affidavit accusing Conyers of sexual harassment. The same day, an article by The Washington Post published allegations by Courtney Morse that Conyers threatened her with a similar fate to that of Chandra Levy. She says that after she rejected his advances, he "...said he had insider information on the case. I don't know if he meant it to be threatening, but I took it that way." Caucus memberships Founding member and dean of the Congressional Black Caucus American Sikh Congressional Caucus Congressional Progressive Caucus United States Congressional International Conservation Caucus Out of Afghanistan Caucus co Congressional Cement Caucus Congressional Full Employment Caucus Congressional Arts Caucus after school caucuses congressional next gen 911 caucus topic political positions according to the new republic conyers was a member of the democratic socialists of america in 1983 topic civil justice Representative Conyers has supported legislation aimed at strengthening the U.S. civil justice system. In March 2016, Rep. Conyers and Representative Hank Johnson introduced legislation to protect consumers' access to civil courts, titled the "'Restoring Statutory Rights Act". This legislation would 
ensure that the state, federal, and constitutional rights of Americans are enforceable, and consumers aren't forced into secretive private arbitration hearings. Topic: Electoral history. Topic: Personal life. Conyers is married to Monica Conyers. In September 2015, Monica Conyers filed for divorce from her husband, citing a «breakdown» in the marriage. He has two children, John III and Carl. Conyers' grandnephew, Ian Conyers, was elected to the Michigan Senate in 2016. He appeared in Michael Moore's documentary Fahrenheit 9-11 discussing the aftermath of the September 11 attacks, stating that members of Congress «don't read most of the bills». Conyers frequently posts at Daily Kos and Democratic Underground. Since May 2005, he has been a contributing blogger at the Huffington Post and on his own blog. In 2007, he was awarded the Spingarn Medal from the NAACP. See also List of African American United States Representatives United States National Health Care Act — legislation introduced by John Conyers that would provide universal health care in the United States Pro-IP Act — legislation introduced by John Conyers that would increase both civil and criminal penalties for trademark and copyright infringement and create a new executive branch office dedicated to enforcing intellectual property laws History of African Americans in Detroit <laughs>